Ray, if we want to think about the ultimate meaning or purpose of human civilization in the universe, uh, how do we begin? I think there are two areas to consider. One you've written about marvelously is the expansion of technology. The second, which other people talk about in a different context, is our position in the universe. Are we going to join the cosmic fraternity and become part of millions of other civilizations? Or are we, if not alone, almost alone? The common reasoning, which is based on this Drake formula, is that, yes, it may be very unlikely that a particular planet has the requisites for life and then techno technologically capable life and then advanced technology, but there's so many of them, millions or billions of stars that could have planets, that there must be millions of radio-capable civilizations uh, like ours. And my, my thinking is colored by the realization that technology proceeds exponentially. And from the very first stirrings of communication, where in 1850, the fastest way of sending a message was the Pony Express, to where just a few centuries later, we will have sublime uh, methods of communication and we will expand our own intelligence with non-biological intelligence. And that only takes a few centuries and the realization that if this sort of common SETI assumption were true, and there were millions of these civilizations out there, well, you know, many of them would be ahead of us. And they wouldn't be ahead of us by, you know, 20 years or 50 years. They'd be ahead of us by millions of years. And if they're only ahead of us by a thousand years, they would have already taken over their galaxies and, be, and have galaxy-wide intelligence and be trillions of times more intelligent than we are, et cetera. And it'd be hard to imagine we wouldn't notice them. And, we, and yet we, have, we, d we don't notice them at all. And then people say, well, it's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. But a, a civilization like that would be putting out trillions of trillions of needles, which is to say intelligent signals. And it'd be hard to imagine we wouldn't notice any of them. So my, my conclusion is it's based on the exponential progression of technology and, and of intelligence once the civilization reaches a level such as we have, it's unlikely that others are ahead of us. Now you might say, gee, isn't it very unlikely that we would be ahead in this vast universe? Well, a lot of things are unlikely. <laughs> it's very unlikely that this universe would exist with all of its constants and, and formulas of, of basic physics so precisely suited for the evolution of complexity. All right, assume, assume that's true. Let's say we are alone. What are then the implications, responsibility? I don't know if that's the right word, but what, what does that mean for human civilization with all of our crazy wars that we have here and yet this incredible technological development that we are undergoing? I mean, I'd say we're moving in, in a good direction. Uh, wars and violence are down. And people would say, what? I mean, if you just look on TV, it doesn't seem that way. There is this countervailing trend that, you know, if something happens halfway across the world, we have a front row seat. You know, World War II, you know, 50,000 people would die in a battle, and maybe you got to see it on a grainy newsreel a few weeks later. Uh, 50 million people died in World War II. You know, now we get upset about thousands of people, and we should, but the scale of destruction is actually down. Most countries are democracies. I think that's fueled by decentralized communication. A, a lot of trends are very positive, including our ability to provide for the economic well-being with, with these advancing technology. I do think 20 years from now, when we have, for example, nano assembly devices that can take an information file and print out three-dimensional objects like clothing and food and, and computers and all the things that you'll need, we'll be able to meet the physical material needs of you know, any conceivable biological population. But let's talk about what the word human means. There's this movement, transhumanism. Mm -hmm. And I mean, generally I agree with what transhumanists say, but I don't like the word transhumanism because it implies going beyond trans, transcending humanity. So we're going to go beyond being human to being something else. But in my view, human means precisely going beyond. To be human is to transcend boundaries. We've transcended human life expectancy, which was 37, 200 years ago, 25, 1,000 years ago. We transcend all of our limitations. We didn't stay on the planet. We went, we went to the moon. We were constantly going beyond our capabilities. And we're going to transform ourselves. We're going to augment our intelligence with our intelligent computation, which will be at human levels and then beyond. And we're, 
if you go out even to 2045, that's only you know four decades from now, uh, most of our intelligence of our civiliz of our human civilization will be non-biological. We're going to put this inside our bodies and brains. Nanobots, nanorobots, the size of blood cells will go inside our body, keeping us healthy from inside, go into the brain through the capillaries, uh, interact with our biological neurons, and expand human intelligence. Well, if you go to 2045, that's going to be where the action is. Much more of our intelligence, in fact, a billion times more, will be in the non-biological portion of our intelligence than the biological portion. So ultimately, we will become principally non-biological. So we're going to become machines, but not... And if you say that, then people go, well, I don't want to become a machine. Because they're thinking of machines as we knew them from the 19th century, which were much lesser than humans. And machines today are still lesser than humans. I'm talking about a new type of machine that's actually greater, more subtle, more supple, more intelligent, more creative, more beautiful than humans today. But it's still, it's still humanity. We, we will ultimately become principally non-biological. But in my view, that's still human, because it, going beyond limitations, even in this profound exponential fashion, is still to remain human. We're going to transcend our biology and all of the enormous limitations in biology, but not our humanity. So given that, where can we look to the purpose of human civilization in the future, assuming we are alone in the universe, which certainly you believe the evidence seems to indicate. Uh, what, what is our future? Where should, what should we be doing? Some people say that death gives life meaning because it uh, mm. gives value to time and time is limited and precious and time is limited and precious. But in my view, not because of death. Death is a tragedy and we ultimately can transcend that as well. That's a whole other topic. But really what humans do is we create knowledge. And a lot of science has been saying how humans really aren't that unique. You know, the, there's nothing unique about the Earth. It's a humble planet around a humble star. And we're just evolved from monkeys and from worms. And there's nothing unique about the human species. There is something that's unique. This opposable appendage we had so we could manipulate the environment and our brains enabled us to create technology. And we created knowledge. And knowledge is itself expanding exponentially. And we need our technology to just to store the knowledge and to find things with search engines. And we have, and knowledge is expanding exponentially. By some measures, it's doubling every year. And knowledge includes art and music and science and engineering and, and our sense of history and our knowledge of ourselves. Uh, that's what's uniquely human. No other animal species has real knowledge that expands, that evolves, that grows, that they pass down from generation to generation. Uh, and knowledge, which is uh, inf not just information, but information has meaning for us, like music or scientific insights, uh, that's what gives life meaning. And we create knowledge through our relationships and through our activities and through our exploration. And people say, well, well when we know everything, then that, that's gonna end. Well, the more we know, the, the larger the horizon of our knowledge is, the larger the boundary of our knowledge, and there's more things that we want to know, and we create mysteries that we didn't even know existed. Uh, and that's really ultimately the, the purpose of human life. Is expansion in the universe part of that? Expansion in the universe is not an end in itself. I think that will be a, nece a necessary but not sufficient condition to continue the expansion of our human civilization, because there's a few steps in that. We're going to merge with our machines, which will ultimately be far more powerful than we are. And then we're going to ultimately saturate the ability to support intelligent computation here on Earth. And then we're going to have to expand into the rest of the universe, basically to find more computational resources. And so that's part of our destiny, but not so much just for exploration, but really to incorporate more resources for intelligent computation.